Welcome back to another video on the Roblox Studio series. On this advanced series, I talk about things that are advanced in Roblox Studio. And on this channel, I talk about Roblox Studio and its features so that people like you, aka the viewer, can be able to create your own games. Another thing I want to mention before I talk about the topic is if you're completely new to this channel or Roblox Studio, I recommend you go in my description to go and see my beginner series, as well as my advanced series, so that once you watch all the videos on there, you're all caught up, and then this video will actually make sense. So, with that out of the way, we can get to the topic. Speaking of the topic, the topic of this video is lurping. Lurping is similar to tweening service. I'm not sure if you've watched that video, but if you haven't, I recommend you go see it in my advanced series. So, tweening, for a refresher, it's used to sort of tween an object's position and orientation. And here, we're going to be learning about looping and how to use it. So here, what I have in the workspace is a part, a blue part, and a green part. This part here, that's white, is going to be the p object we're going to be using to move the position to this part here. The blue part is a marker to indicate of where the part started at, and the green part is the goal, or where we want the part to go to. Okay. Now with the workspace covered, we can actually get into scripting. So we're going to be doing stuff with the goal and the part, so we want to get variables for that. So we're going to type local. Oh, I typed that wrong. And we're going to type part is equal to, and it's going to be equal to the actual part in, in the workspace. So we're going to type game dot workspace dot part. Next, we're going to type a variable for the goal or the green part. So we're going to do another variable, which is local goal is equal to game dot workspace dot goal. We enter twice and what we type is uh sorry. Now what we type is the marker. Well not the marker, I don't know. I need a second to think, I'm sorry for the mess up. But what I'm trying to say, okay now that I got my brain clear cleared out, what I'm what we're gonna do now which is actually what we're going to do is type part and now we're getting the C frame of the part if you don't know what C frame is and I believe is in my beginner series so you can go see it so that you understand what C frame is part dot C frame the C frame is equal to the part C frame but we're going to lerp it so let's just type C frame really quick and then we're going to do colon since we're doing a function then we're going to do a colon and then we're going to type lerp it's kind of a funny name of it being called LERP. It's an acronym, well not an acronym, or it's a shortened, a shortened version of the actual word, but uh, but it sounds funny either way. It's still funny of how it's called LERP. But, sorry, I'm off track. But it, so now what we gotta do is the parameters inside here of the LERP is gonna be the where the part, where we want the part to go to, and the percentage of how far we want it to go to the part or the destination. Okay, the second one probably sounds a bit confusing, but I'll explain it. First, the goal is the actual goal object. So we're going to type goal in here, the variable that we created. And then we're going to do comma. Oh, before we do that, we got to type C frame because we're not doing the goal itself. We're getting the C frame or the positioning so that we can move it there. And then we do a comma so that we can type the actual percentage. So you may be wondering what percentage I'm talking about, and that's because in lerping you can choose of how far you want it to get to that destination. Like you can get it 50% there, or 75%, like a loading screen. Try to imagine it that way. It, the left side is the starting point, and the right side of the loading screen is the end point, and then the bar is the actual part, and it's moving down, and then you get to choose of which percentage. I don't know. What I mean is that you can have the ability to change of how far it goes from its starting destination to the end destination. 
So I'm going to make it go 50% that way. So we're going to do 0.5 because we have to do this in decimals and 0.5 stands for 50%. So we're going to be making it go halfway, if that makes sense. So with this setup, we can do, we can actually run this and it will move about right here. So let's go to home, click run. I recommend you choose run so that you can just run it and not loading your character. Oh, okay, as you can see, you can see that the green part's over here, the blue part's over here, and the part is right in the middle of these two parts. So now you see of how we can make this go like 0 0.5 or stuff. And um, yeah, it's, it's a simple basic stuff. But don't worry, this is not the end of the video if you're thinking that. Because we still have a couple more things to do. And that is to make it look more like an animation. I want to show this to you guys because I think it would be pretty cool. You could be creative with this and make cool things in your game if you're working on one. But if you're not, you could try making one for fun using the language that I've been giving you guys throughout the series. So, what we're going to do is make a for loop so that it can continue running. So we're going to do for i is equal to, then we're going to do 0 to 1. What this is doing is choosing, or not choosing, but it's starting, it's choosing the starting point and the end point, which is 0 to 1, because we're doing decimals, if you know what I mean. And then we'll have to type in of how far we want it to go every time like the speed of it so if we the smaller the number we make it like like uh, 0 0.001 then this is going to go super slow like this what I mean is that the smaller number you do the more of an animation it will look like like if you did it at 1 then it would just go straight to it and then the for loop would be useless so what I mean is that we can make it into an animation by doing 0 0.01 like that and then we're going to type do and under here, so that it doesn't have this red line, is end. There we go. So when we run it, it should continue repeating. And also right here, we can make this into i, aka the variable we made up here, i. So we're going to click the i button. And next we want to add a weight so that we can actually see it moving. So we're going to type weight. Oh, whoops. There we go. So now it's going to actually look like it's an animation. So we're going to run the game. And then. And that looks pretty cool. Even though I've done this before, it still looks cool when you see it. And also, if you notice something, it sort of slid next to the part. If you saw that, I'm not sure if you did, but I did. So you can rewind it if you wanted to see it. And that's because can collide is on, so that the two parts would collide into each other when doing the lerping process. So if we turn off can collide, it would go immediately into the center of it. So we could go, well not immediately, sorry I said that. I meant like it would, when it does animation, it wouldn't slide then go in, it would just go in. If you know what I mean. So now we're going to run it again, so you can see it actually do it. Oh, I messed up, shoot. Uh, what I did wrong is that since anchor wasn't on at the time, since can collide was off, then everything just, just fell down is collapsed since there's nothing to hold it up since anchor is not on as well as can collide then falls down to the ground we don't want that to happen which was a minor mistake I did I'm sorry but now it should work one second loading there we go that honestly looks pretty cool if you ask me like that looked pretty sick seeing that thing move even though it looks so simple it's still so cool of seeing of how simple of a text you can well not text but script you can make to make this awesome animation. So that is about the simp simple stuff that I wanted to show you. And here we can delete this part because before the e end of the video comes in, I want to show you one more thing. And that's because uh, maybe you don't want to get it to a part specifically. Maybe because you, you want to put it at a specific destination because it's not moving to another object in your game. So I want to show that too so that you guys even know more stuff for if your game has more specific things that you want to do. So in script, to do that, we don't need this for loop. Well, actually, no, we do. We do. Sorry. We do need it because if we want to animate to the area of where we're going to want it to go. So we don't need this anymore. 
not if we are removing that part instead we're making a custom position i'm not really sure of where this is going to go but we're going to see i'm going to type in random numbers for the c frame so we're going to do c frame oh i did caps lock sorry we're going to c frame this time tab if you wanted to know if you type a letter and then it highlights here let me show you i wanted to show this because i'm not sure if i reviewed this before so c and how you see as you frame uh highlighted in blue you click the tab then it automatically types it if you wanted to know, so that you can speed through and make your scripting easier. Cframe.new, and inside of here, we're going to type in, sorry for a second, I need to think, right, the coordinates for the position, because we're doing cframe.new. So cframe.new, and the new thing is going to be, how about, uh, 11 dot, uh, 10, well not 10, and we have to do a comma, sorry. And then we're going to do how about 4, and how about, I don't know, 7 again. Well, not again, but 7. And then next to that, we're going to do a comma, and then I is going to go there since we're still doing that loop. So now that we've got this set up, and it's pretty much the same other than the change of the C frame, we can load it in again and see where this thing's going to go. Uh oh. Oh, right. Since I typed in this variable, it's not valid anymore since I deleted the part, so we have to remove this. Alright, I'm still in testing mode. Uh, let's click stop. Okay, so it went back in because when you try to edit something or change something in a script while you're still running the game, then it's going to put it back in when you get out. So that's why you want to delete this. And we're going to load into the game and see where this goes. Now it should work. There we go. It moved somewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, it did something over there. Uh, I don't know what happened. Maybe there's something with collision stuff. Okay, let's turn off can collide and turn on anchored. That should work. Okay, now it should work. Oh, there we go. Now it's not doing that weird bouncy thing anymore. Because now since anchor's there, I think it made it float. I'm not sure if it did. Yeah, it did make it float. So because of that, since the anchor was off, it just collapsed. But now that it's on, it stayed up in the air. So yeah, that's how you do it. And yeah, I want you to feel free. You can do a lot of st stuff here. You don't need to use a form loop, I believe. You can do something else with it, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, what I mean is that you have a lot of freedom here. You can change the part name. Uh, you can add even more directions like it moves to several different lerps like from one part to another or one destination to another then another destination or you can even make it go in a circle I'm just giving you some ideas of things you could try out until my next video so yeah sadly this is the end of the video and you'll see me next week with a new video about database so you can learn more about that on the dev forum I made a video about the Roblox wiki in my advanced series so you can go see uh, so yeah, that's this is the end of the video. I hope you have an amazing day. Uh, stay safe, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye!